Oh, shake em up, shake em up. I shouldn't even say shake em up. I should say, um, more wild cards, I should say, tonight for SmackDown. What do I have to say about this show? Was it better than the whatever the fuck that was on Monday Night Raw last night? You know, I, I'm not even going to go into the whole SmackDown wins by default thing because it's just in general at this point. But then again, SmackDown wasn't that great also, maybe on a few parts. But it was better than whatever the fuck going on was with Monday Night Raw last night with wild cards and just odd matches and silly shit and Vince saying he's a genius and um, pushing Baron Corbin and stuff. But... Smackdown tonight, where does this lead since this whole wild card thing, huh? Well, was it Louisville, Kentucky tonight? Which I'll get into that crowd in a second because they were kind of up and down all over the place at one point. But um, we kicked it off with the show and AJ Styles uh, being part of the uh, wild card rules thing. Saying, you know, it was good to be back on Smackdown. He said he's missed Smackdown even though you've been gone for like, what, two three weeks and and we'll get to the others also who came back tonight but um who came back tonight too but it's almost like AJ has not really been gone that long from Smackdown he's only been gone for like three weeks all right uh three three weeks it's supposed to be um three weeks he's been gone so it's not like he never really left since he's back on here and then he talked about Vince's wild card rule from last night and then, you know, if you're brave enough and fast enough, you can cross over to the rival brand, as he said, that, all, you know, four superstars can go, which at first it was three, but now they made it four now, I see, um, for every week with this whole wild card thing. And, you know, SmackDown was the house that AJ Styles built. But as AJ kept talking, Sami Zayn, who surprisingly is not dead from that whole, um, you know, being dumped into a dumpster last night and had a truck thrown a truck pick him up and throw him into the garbage can but hey that's Sami Zayn for you he's either magically back or uh he's a zombie or something but since he's back um Sammy once again castrating the marks as I like to call it now um talking about the Kentucky crowd how they are Kentucky Fried Hillbillies and he will not let AJ's toxic ego take over the show but AJ said you smell like a foot and hey, congratulations, you got out of the dumpster and everything, which the fans started to chant, take a shower at Sami Zayn. Zayn pretty much he accused AJ of, you know, misdirection and everything. But as he kept talking, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods came out. Kofi pretty much um, talked about AJ saying, um, you know, you're the house that AJ Styles built, but um, you don't live here anymore, okay? This is his house now. But as Kofi pretty much um, talked from that, uh, AJ saying that, you know, I just want to return the favor since Kofi asked, why are you even on this show tonight? Uh, Woods pretty much told Styles, just like the commercial for Mortal Kombat 11 and the Ice Cube um, song, uh, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, okay? Kofi pretty much um, said he is the champ. This is my ring now. I'm the champion now, okay? And he asked AJ, what are you going to do about it? But Sammy pretty much saying, you know, um, you guys need to stop. Because this is where you're going, what's wrong, okay? Because you're going to give him a, a title shot before me, since I guess he was offering it from him. And he was not happy with that. Sammy said, I should be next for a WWE title shot that I have been, you know, hooked by the fans' affection and everything. It's people like me that deserve it, and people like AJ do not deserve a title shot. So he is the one that mostly deserves it because he tells the truth to these people even though they want it, they don't want to hear it. Uh, Kofi and Wood said, you smell like uh, my 10th grade um, sock jar, as Xavier Wood said. But Kofi says, I proved myself last night when I beat Daniel Bryan. It was not a fluke. I did it again. I'm a fighting champion. I'll defend my title anytime, anywhere. And I'll do it later tonight, okay? So I guess it's going to be a triple threat match. Kofi Kingston's now giving out title matches now, it looks like. Why is, I'm surprised they even have a Kofi Kingston defend the championship again tonight, okay? that's uh, I thought it didn't make sense any night that, you know, 
okay, so we're going to do the WWE title match on Raw, and they just match the SmackDown guys magically appear on Raw because of wild card rules, so he's going to defend it, so he defends it last night, he gonna de- he's going to defend it tonight, we know he's going to win because he's got to face Kevin Owens at Money in the Bank for the title, so... It doesn't make a lot of sense. And then again, AJ Styles is going for a championship on Monday Night Raw against Seth Rollins. Why is he in a title match for the WWE Championship, huh? That doesn't make a lot of sense. We know he's going against Seth. We know he's got a match at Money in the Bank for the Universal title. So why is he in this? I'm surprised Sami Zayn is even in a match right now since every week it's just him talking about the fans. As as everyone says, just Vince and the creative team using Sami Zayn as a speaking voice to talk about the crowd to you know say how they really feel about them so i'm surprised Sami Zayn was even in a match night let alone a title shot but it just does not make sense that aj is even in what two title matches now you got one in money in the bank so now he's going for both belts it makes literally no sense kofi kingston we already know he's got a match in money in the bank so there was no doubt in him losing tonight and you know they pretty much um uh, what, what did they do? They went to Kevin Owens in the back, which he said he was not going to be here because today is his birthday. And, you know, yeah, I would be kicking off the show and everything, but I don't feel like uh, doing it. So he's pretty much on his day off. I don't blame him. I would take a day off, too, if it was my birthday also. It's a lot of birthdays I've been going and seeing around today, to be honest. But, um, hey, I, I don't blame him. It's my birthday, so fuck work. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, I guess that's how you explain it. Don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't blame him at all. But, um... Moving on from that, um, since, like I said, everybody's throwing out title matches now and everything, uh, we went to Mustafa mm-hmm. Ali, uh, who had another one of his pre-tape promos that still looked cool, I will say that. He was out in the streets looking at the light, talking about how darkness, and that there's always a light somewhere, that, you know, he's going to win the Money in the Bank match that, um... That is his destiny, if I think he said, since, you know, he had a a shot before, but that was taken away from him. So he's going to do anything to get that, and he's going to be searching for that light. And as as long as he could see that light, he would continue to fight then. Um, Andrade C. and Albus came out with Zelina Vega. As Vega pretty much said that, you know, know, like the Kentucky Derby, there's thousands who want to gather and, you know, watch money in the bank, but there's only one thoroughbred bread in the race. And that is Andrade um, almost grabbed the mic, which I still don't understand why they let him talk trying to, because we can't really understand his English that well. Of course, there's going to be what chance, I believe. And if they have Vegas speaking for him, you have a manager. That's what, what they're there for. You don't really need to speak. I know he's trying to speak his English out well, but it is a little hard to hear him sometime. Because he pretty much said he would become dinero in... De, ba- de Banco, in other words, Mr. Money Money in the Bank. Um, you know, he was going to win, and uh, Ali would be jealous of his success. You know, as for the match itself, it wasn't really bad or anything, but it ended up with Randy Orton coming out, attacking both guys. Orton tried to hit the DET on Almas, you know, through the ropes, but Vega ended up, ended up grabbing his leg. Almas had kicked Orton. Um, Ali started kicking Orton in, he started attacking him. Um, once Ali went across the ropes, next thing you know, uh, Orton mid, you know, pop-up RKO, Almas jumps at, you know, doing a springboard, Orton hits him with a flying RKO, looks smooth as hell, of course, the crowd's gonna pop, because RKO out of nowhere, that's why, and it, it, it still looks cool, though, but, um, pretty much Orton looked up, the crowd's pretty much started cheering in, as, you know, he just walked to the back, so, yeah, he took out both Almas and Ali right there, which I'm sure they're probably going to get some payback on him next week anyways. Um, and he's going to get some payback, um, you know, wh- payback on him anyway, so um, expect that to happen next week. I believe it's next, is the go-home show next week or is it the next two weeks? I don't know, but at least they're doing something with the money in the bank competitors and what they're doing on Monday Night Raw with them right now. But, yeah, flying RKO's out of nowhere, of course. They played this. Now, th- this is what's strange to me right here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, um, well, one thing they did, they played this Roman Reigns video package. And, <laughs> well, this is what's funny to me about this. Other than them trying to get him over as much as possible, as usual, um, they played this video package and... It's like, it's telling 
pretty much Roman's entire history in the company, which, why do we need to know that if we already know? So why do we need a video package? Because what, we went from 2012 when he was in NXT, then skipped to 2014 when the Shield's going on. 2015, Money in the Bank. Let's edit out the uh, the Money in the Bank in 2015 where the entire crowd hijacked the whole freaking show. But, hey, let's edit out the booze, though, and put cheers in, okay? Yeah, I remember that, uh, how how the show was hijacked and everybody just was pissed off that night because Brian got eliminated. But, hey, people were cheering, though, during that match, allegedly. 2016, last time I remember that, that match with him and Triple H. Oh, he's got to beat all the gods I see now in the WWE. Beats Triple H in the main event of WrestleMania, um, what was it, 32, 2016? I remember that match getting heavily booed. 2017, beating John Cena. I remember the crowd turning on that. Beating The Undertaker. Of course, he gets booed from that, 2017. 2018, beats uh, Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Fast forward, the um, whole leukemia thing. Gone for four months, comes back. Bigger than ever, three weeks ago, back on SmackDown. So, what was the point of this video package? Okay, what, to set up to go against Elias? Okay, uh, is that what it was for? And Shane? Was there really a purpose to this video package? We know who he is. We, we know who he is. So, what what was the point in this? I, I really want to know. I swear to God, I, I want to know. What was the point in doing this video package for Roman Reigns? I, I, I have no idea. I don't understand. I, I, I just don't get it at all. Okay, so what what in the point of telling his entire history? And then just trying to edit out the booze and turn them into cheers then. But, hey, that's Roman for you. They got to get him over any way that's possible. Shane McMahon came out then to introduce the new tag team champions. As he talked about the tag division because of the Hardys having to give up their belts last week. Um, he pretty much addressed what happened last night with The Miz and the whole steel chair thing. And he said, what kind of person does that? Hits another man with a steel chair, but he could not get the job done last night. And he will not get it money in the bank in that steel cage match also. But since they were here for the tag champions and everything, he was going to name them, which are Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, surprisingly. Which I am in, I am interested in it, but I'll get to the point with the tag teams in a second. Usos came out. Um, how many people is that tonight? Uh, well, they did say four. If you want to count the Usos as one team, because we can get to everybody from you know Miz still too. But um, between AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, Usos, and the Miz, that's four. But if you want to count the Usos since they're two people, it's still five. But I see a lot of people are saying, well, since the Usos are a team, we're going to count that as four then. But the Usos coming out there, which what I said about AJ too, they've only been gone from SmackDown for like, what, three weeks? So it's not like they never left. They said they don't, um, they pretty much said that, um, you know, um, what did they, they say, um, They said that uh, Rowan and Brian don't deserve the tag titles and that, you know, Roman Reigns told them that could slide into the yard anytime they want it. But they said you need to give those tag team titles to us. They didn't earn it. They didn't earn it like the New Day or the Bar or us right now. Okay, you're going to give it to these two cartoon guys out here, SpongeBob and Patrick, Ren and Stimpy, Beavis and Butthead. They wanted a match, and they got to earn it for it. But Shane agreed, and he said, let's get a ref down here right now, and let's make this a match then for the tag titles, okay? Um, I am surprised they have now moved Daniel Bryan from the main title picture to the tag title picture, I will say that. But it's not like there's any tag teams as it is already, but... I even I wonder how many times they were going to have Daniel Bryan go after the WWE title, even though he fought for it last night. So, what would have been the point if he had fought for it again, huh? Just think about that for a second. But, the the match itself, what can I say? This was not a bad match, number one. Let, let me say that. This wasn't, this was, it was actually a really good match. And look at the crowds actually get into it. I didn't really think the Usos were going to win anyways because what have they done to get a title shot? In general, you're on Monday Night Raw and all I've really seen them do is become the new Edge and Christian or DX with them doing comedy skits and everything every week on Raw, putting itching powder in the Revival's trunks, making them scratch and rub their nuts and asses all over the place on Raw like dogs scraping their butts on the ground when they can't get the doo-doo out of themselves. So that's what the uh, Usos are doing, being a comedy team nowadays on Monday Night Raw. 
being the ultimate pranksters or edging Christian. But, um, this was not a bad match, though. I liked it because Usos did get the splash, but it did not work. Brian, um, pretty much knocked one of the Usos out the ring. Jimmy Kieran just came back with a super kick. They tried to do that suicide dive thing, but Rowan caught both of them. Um, Brian hit a running knee to one of the Usos outside. Um, he pretty much got the other Uso because Uso had trying to fight off with super kicks, but Rowan pretty much hit him with like that iron claw choke slam and got the win, uh, crowning new tag team champions. I am surprised that they are the tag team champions, but then when I thought about it, what teams do they really have to face on SmackDown? Who do Rowan and, um, like Brian and Rowan really have to face? There was barely any tag teams as it is. And they all suck. They got literally no credibility to them. So who gives a shit what these tag belts are, okay? So I, I'm intrigued. And, you know, they can, what are they going to do? Get hemp belts now? We're going to get rid of metal and they're going to get hemp. And I'm sure Daniel Bryan's going to cut some great promos on the tag team saying, I'm here to save the tag division. The tag division is dead. I am here to save it to make it mean something around here again. I can see it happening right now. And he's going to get some hemp belts and that. You know, calling whatever tag teams deplorable and stuff. So you can watch out for that. But with them becoming the new tag team champions. Uh, Shane gave both of them the belts. And pretty much when he did uh, give them. He did give them both of the uh, tag team titles though. Um, yeah, he pretty much was going to start talking about something else that had to do with money in the bank. But before he can give his announcement, Miz ended up coming out, jumping in from behind, attacking Shane all the way to the up part of the stage. Next thing you know, the B team come out, the B team of all things come out, and they did work with Miz before too. But the B team come out, attack Miz, Shane, uh, Miz fall him off, Shane ended up hitting the Miz with a steel chair. Um, in his back, hitting him a couple times, and pretty much standing tall over him. So, yes, the Shane and Miz thing continue. I don't really want to see it, but, hey, that's them. I'm surprised they didn't have Roman come out there and brawl with Shane this week. But, they didn't. So, um, th there you go. Um, but even, you know, pretty much after they, I should say, if they won the tag titles, I kind of, you see, um, Brian and... Brian and Rowan walking past Heavy Machinery, so I can see that being the next tag team title match or feud right now as it is. And should be some great promos with Brian pretty much calling Otis and then fat, deplorable slobs or something, saying that you're hurting the environment with your heavy machines. I am a hybrid person, okay? I do not drive a machine that has smoke clogged in the air from your cars and exhaust fumes containing and polluting the environment. There you go. I just came up with a promo for him, which I am probably think he'll say in the next week or two. If he is going against heavy, they are going against heavy machinery. So there, I can, I can see, imagine something like that happening next week. There, there you go. It, most likely it's going to happen. If not next week, sooner or later. Remember that shit, um... Moving on, though, no. um, other than the Planet's Champions, uh, Carmella and Ember Moon, I think Carmella went back to blonde hair now, um, went against pretty much Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Listen, the crowd was pretty much dead. This match was like two minutes. I'm very confused by Ember Moon taking a pinfall from Mandy Rose, which literally made no sense to me. Because what, Sonya used herself, like what, she took the bullet for Mandy Rose after Ember Moon did a suicide dive. And Mandy run with that double underhook, whatever, like implant buster move or something on Ember Moon. I I really almost see the piss to confuse why Ember Moon's taking the pin. I said, isn't that what Carmella's there for? Why is Ember Moon losing? Why? Someone, someone tell me why. That, that made no sense to me. That's just, I, I don't know. But pretty much then after that, what, they had Paige and Kyrie saying Asuka come out. Pretty much saying, hey, it's two people I used to manage. Because I'm managing a new relevant team. And they're going to rip through the tag division starting with them. So, other than them winning that tag match there, it didn't really do much. What, they're pretty much going to get fed to Kyrie and um, Asuka. So, uh, well, what, what do you want to go off from that, huh? Seriously, uh, where, where do you go off from that? Mm. 
yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but, um, I don't know. I, I, like, you, you already know they're going to pretty much lose to, um, Kyrie Nasca. You, you can already see that coming a mile away. It's not a lot of tag team it's as it is on SmackDown, especially with the women's side. So, um, or just in general when you look at it. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That's just two minutes, huh? Beat Ember Moon. Makes no sense. Alistair Black still sitting in the dark room talking about sins. As he was sitting there watching uh, what the wrath and salvation and apologize for his opponents and prevail that, you know, it is the sins that have wronged them, but he's going to seek victory by their sins. Okay, is he gonna, when's he wrestling? Even I'm trying to see why is it, uh, okay, they want to reintroduce him, right? Even though the guy's been on TV for like two months tagging with Ricochet the whole time. And now you want to play, listen. We already know who he is. We did this in NXT when they had promo videos for him. So, I don't know what they're really going with this right now. With him pretty much talking about, what was it, last week? Because this week was Sins. Last week it was Darkness, I think it was. Or Fading the Black. Or Fear. It was about Fear last week. But now it's about Sins. I'm trying to see where this is going. But I'm not really sure now where this is going. So... I don't know. When's he getting back in the ring? And this is three weeks now, if I'm not mistaken. So, there you go. Uh, Matt Hardy was in the back asking about um, Jeff. As, you know, Jeff already had successful surgery. And as they were talking about Lars Sullivan, our truth came up then. As Truth said, what's up? And they were talking about, you know, Truth said that, you know, Sullivan's arms are like a bear trap. And they get a hold of us. You can't, you gonna get got. Uh, but as far as Matt Hardy could say something to Caleb Braxton, um, pretty much... Matt turned around, told truthfully, it, it's, it's Lars, it's the monster, and Matt looks like a street fighter, Mortal Kombat character, trying to fight like this, getting ready to try to, I, I guess he was trying to square up with Sullivan, pretty much Truth is still staring at Sullivan, Truth, um, no, Sullivan punches Truth, Matt tries to charge at him, he gets thrown and I think it was to a bathroom or somewhere through a door, we never see him. Truth tried to uh, charge him into a table, didn't work. Once again, Truth gets power bomb, except through a table in the back. So I'm assuming Sullivan's feud is going to be with Matt Hardy and our Truth. Then again, I kept hearing rumors about Big Money Matt coming back from TNA, but I don't even know if that's gonna happen. To be honest, and I like Big Money Matt and TNA. Don't get me wrong, but are they really gonna bring in his whole crew? Like I said about the whole broken woken thing, they aren't gonna bring in his whole crew. Yeah, they did that what for that Ultimate Deletion thing that was okay. Because to be honest, the, the whole Big Money Matt thing was good, but they're not going to bring his kids in, I believe. They're not going to bring Rebby in. Um, what, Senior Benjamin, if if I'm not mistaken. Or even Spud. Spud was once part of that crew. That's, that's not going to happen. So I don't know what Matt Hardy and Truth are doing, but I guess they are uh, fighting Sullivan now at this point. Until further notice. Yeah, but, um,. Other than that, we get into the main event of the show. AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, and Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. Very good match. Very, really good match, I will say that. Which crowd would have been a little bit more hyped into this. But uh, with the match being really great, though, um, pretty much coming to the end of this, Kofi pretty much hit the um, Trouble in Paradise on AJ before he could do the Phenomenal Forearm. Next thing you know, Kevin Owens pretty much came out and attacked Xavier Woods. He was on his day off, but he pretty much beat him up and threw him to the side of the ring. He was still out there. Sami Zayn hit two uh, blue thunder bombs on Kofi Kingston after that. As you know, Owens was still standing there, which I'm surprised he didn't attack Kofi Kingston, though. Because, like, wait a minute, you're fighting him for the WWE Championship, so why are you helping Sami Zayn win the title then? I guess because he's his friend and everything, but... Wouldn't you just tack Kofi anyway so you can get him and make sure he doesn't lose the WWE Championship so you can take the WWE Championship? So it's for a minute, almost like he was going to let him win. But after Sammy hit a third um, blue thunder, ball, thunder bomb, it did not work. Sammy was pretty much getting pissed. Kofi ended up hitting the Trouble in Paradise for the win, retaining the WWE Championship as they asked him as he checked on Woods on the outside then. Asked him why, where did Kevin Owens come from? He says, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't know anything and... Um, and stuff, but Kofi pretty much said that um, it's going to be hell to pay for Kevin Owens at Money in the Bank. So, very good tag team match. Not tag team match. Very great main event, though, for a triple threat match for the WWE title, though. 
I will say that, but it's not like AJ or Miz was ever, AJ or Sammy was never winning this title to begin with. They never were. So, because like I said, we know he's got a match of money to bank Kofi. So, it's not like he was going to lose it tonight. He did it. It's like he wasn't going to lose it last night when he defended the title against Brian. So, he was never going to lose. Uh, you know, okay, so we, we know that. But as for the show itself, I, I listen, it was better than Raw, okay? I enjoyed the tag title match. I enjoyed the WWE title match. Doesn't make a lot of sense when you look at it, but I enjoyed it. As for the wild cards, half these people look like they never left, okay? They haven't been away from SmackDown that long. AJ was just here. Miz was just here. The Usos were just here. Sami Zayn, not really, but then again, he's just there to castrate the marks, and he came back from the dead from a garbage can, so... Uh, you know, he, he was that really on SmackDown anyway, so th th there you go. But these wild cards, these are the same people we just seen on this show. Is this really going to pop a rating? I don't know. Was they able to pop a rating on Raw last night? Yeah, it's what I've read. Because they they, I think they threw anything in the wall last night until shit sticks there. Because I don't know what ideas they're coming up with that show nowadays. But it's just bad and most likely this too. But, you know, from Roman video packages and... um. Like I said, new tag team champions being crowned and, you know, just this whole wild card thing. A lot of it doesn't make sense. Was this show better by the fault on Raw? Yeah, it was better than the fault by Raw. Did a lot of stuff that made sense on this show tonight? Not really. It's a lot of confusing things to wonder why, who did this or why this happened. I don't even know where this is going because, hey, I probably didn't even see Becky on TV tonight, huh? Hell, you didn't even see the Intercontinental Champion. Well, they said Finn was back in his um home country in Ireland right now, so he's not around. Um, Nope, no Becky tonight? Nah. Okay, I, so there was no champion. Hell, at least there was no iconic sauce in this show either, okay? But other than that, you saw what, a couple RKO's here and there and... I don't know, just just whatever with this episode of SmackDown to me. Especially they got, what, two weeks to Money in the Bank. At least they build more than they did for Money Night Raw going into Money in the Bank. But, hey, I, what could I be so sure for? But if you get the chance, check out my review. Check out SmackDown review or anything. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you thought about this show tonight. Follow me on Twitter at HoodedNight890. Uh, that's all I really got to say about SmackDown from on at this point of what's been going on. A lot of confusing shit still, but at least some stuff was okay. But still, confusing as ever. Mm. But yeah, that that's the show there for you folks. Uh we'll see. Money in the bank, whatever. Ross sucked, so um there you go. But we just hand out regular title shots here, people. We are. But yeah, that's all I pretty much got to say about SmackDown, no. It's not really like talk since it's a two hour show anyways. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>